What's happening beautiful people? My name is Dirty Mike and welcome back to the journey where I'm building different squads We progress through divisional play get involved in some tournaments and as always I'm dropping feedback on which players really put in that work and then other guys that don't live up to the card value Squads that work squads that might be a little bit suspect and before I begin if you guys need ultimate team coins Check out fifacoinstoday.com the links will be in the description and make sure to use the code Mike's09 M I C H S 9 in order to get an additional 10% off on every single purchase for today's video, we're back to the mac and cheese, some of my beauty and the beast action, and we've got a BVA sweaty squad, but we're coming in at that discount tip. Everyone should be able to remake this team. They're under 50,000 coins, and unfortunately, this league has some of the most expensive players in the game, and it's difficult to get your hands on a Messi, get your hands on a Ronaldo, possibly pick up a Gareth Bale, and I was reading an article as we get into some Division One matches that Gareth Bale is actually no longer in packs, and that's why his price has been constantly going up. And I'm not sure if that's true or false. It could be a myth. But I wanted to share that information. I found that very interesting. If that's true, EA really slipped and fell and they dropped the ball. How can you just knock the guy? Just take him out of everything. And oh, good save to start out the first game. And if we could smash 350, 450 likes on this video, that would be outstanding. Oh, that's a terrible goal to concede there. I made a really poor decision on the corner kick. Going in between FUT, head-to-head, -head, and all these different game modes as we get a nice little baby chip there with his off foot from Diego Costa. Love that Brazilian. I've got a lot to say about my man Diego Costa. And I've added some new graphics. I hope you guys enjoy those. Uh, drop a comment. Let me know. I've also added something special at the end of the video. Uh, it does take a little bit more time, but I think it's a good look for the series and that you guys really appreciate it. And that's what it's all about, is constantly improving my content to make it better for everyone that's watching. That's the idea here. And if you guys could also drop a comment and let me know, because I am in Division 1. Ah, we can see it in Equalizer. That's frustrating. I am in Division 1, and I'd like to know if you guys want me to strictly go into Division 1 matches in the future, mix and match, which, which is kind of what I do now based on whatever squad I've built. Whether I'm getting into tournaments, going into single matches, going into divisions. And the reason I have to do that or I feel like it's necessary is because when you build a fun team, you build a silver squad, you build a bronze team, you don't get matched up against those squads when you're going into division matches because EA's matchmaking system is so flawed. But make sure to drop a comment. I'll do whatever you guys are interested in. I don't mind taking a challenge, but I like to have some pretty gameplay, if that makes sense. I'd like to have some beautiful gameplay on display. If I put together a skill squad, I want to have some skill runs. I want to have something to make you guys jump out of your seat, maybe score a couple nice goals, but you never know what's going to happen. And if you just want to see me try to romp in Division 1, try to do my thing, ah, we banged down the post to start out game number 2, I'll go straight into Division 1 for everyone. We got a lot to talk about with the squad, though. That is for certain. So let's start with the defense. Uh, we've got the uh, Belgium keeper, young guy, Courtois. And for me, this league in general, the BBVA, as we get a little bit of a lucky bounce, I don't know what the defense was doing, but Vargas with the finish, I'll take the goal. And I found that the BBVA is very weak for keepers, regardless of ratings. I like Diego Lopez, uh, and I like Courtois, but neither of them are on my top five list, but they're the best two in the league. Diego Alves is too inconsistent, Casillas just feels too small sometimes, ooh, Nice save there. Can we get the rebound? Ah, and we hit the post for the second time in the match. Come on, we got to tuck those away. It's got to happen. And then I've got Marcelo. And if you've watched some of my top five videos, then you know that I like the guy. I've talked about him a little bit. Very solid left back. He can attack. He can defend. Then we've got the teammates, Pepe and Ramos. Ooh, we were dancing there in the middle. Boy, were we dancing. And we just dominated this guy, to be completely honest. I know it says he had six shots, but nothing was close or on target. Didn't really challenge me. Uh, all that much. I think I had one defensive error where he had a breakaway, but that was about it. Ooh, and we're going in a 4-3-2-1. I didn't even notice the latency was on that yellow bar. Uh, and this is one of those games, and I'm sure everybody can relate to this, where things from the get-go aren't going right. Honestly, Quadrado should not score that goal. That should be a simple save for Courtois. And that's what I was saying with him being very inconsistent at times. And this game's a perfect example. He makes multiple mistakes that I just could not believe. I could not believe this prime timekeeper made those mistakes. Uh, most of you guys know about Pepe and Ramos, solid players. I don't really need to go into detail. Ramos' positioning could be a little bit better. I wanted to go with Juan Fran. I'm not a big fan of using uh, Alves out there on the right. He's just got terrible positioning for me. It's unfortunate, but it bothers me. 
and it wouldn't have kept this squad at a discount rate. And look at that. I'm just getting rocked in the first half. This is one of those games where because I was down 3-0 in the 20th minute, I just never could get into it. And things were not going my way. I think everybody can relate to this. Look at this. This is a great example of when things are just not going for you. Look at that. He falls on the ball right in the net. Down 4-0. And it's frustrating. I was like, man, get me to the next game. And I don't rage quit. It's very rare. But we are going to steal a consolation. Diego or Diego Costa's like, I'm not letting you down, buddy. I've got your back. Don't even worry about it. And I decided to go with the 4 triple 2 formation. It's really popular in head-to-head -head on the competitive scene this year. I saw some people use it in the Kick TV Invitational. I can't talk about that, though. I can't give you any details. No early information, but I have seen it used uh, among the players. And look at this second squad. Bad time for my opponent to pick... Uh, to use a, a team that's not necessarily prime time because I was already frustrated after coming out of that loss and then he went in with a second rate squad in division one and it's going to show as we start out great Isco with a, a long shot from uh, from about the fifth six minute mark and that just started the cakewalk and look at this another chip by Diego Costa he's got that down pack his finishing is superb then I've got Modric and I've always liked using this guy, whether it's a CDM, center mid, center attacking mid. I think he can do it all in FIFA 14. He moves very clean on the ball. And then I've got Isco as well. And I just didn't know who I would prefer to have at that cam roll, to be completely honest. Because Isco has never been a primetime player for me this year. I've never been co <laughs> on that tip to co-sign Isco too heavy. If you want to talk about one of my weakest links or, or uh, con on this squad, Isco is one of those guys. He just doesn't show up. All the time. He decides when he wants to play. And look at that volley, though, from, from Diego, man. He's like, I got you. And we were already up 4-0. I got a little fancy with it. Vargas with the finish. Uh, if you haven't used Vargas, he's a newly transferred player. He was at Napoli, I think, for half the year last year. He's a great little striker. He's very fast. He feels relatively strong. He jumps well. He can finish. He can shoot. You name it, he can do it. He'll make a big difference in the BVA now that he is there. He came in in the January window. Try him out. Let me know what you think. And Diego Costa is a monster. He's stronger than everyone. He's not as fast as some players, and he could have a little bit of a better weak foot, but his strength, his power, his ability to hold off the defenders, and look at what I've added at the end of the video. So I wanted to talk about some of the things that were good and bad. I scored six goals with Diego Costa in four matches, had a couple assists. Vargas was right there helping him, and he's my MVP, my marquee player every day of the week. Strength, size, power, and the ability to finish. He's going to make things happen. And I thought that the, the center backs were pretty solid as a combo. However, the midfield, I wish I had a little bit more pace, especially on the counters. You need more support. You can't just go strictly through the strikers. But if you enjoyed the video, drop a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter at Mike's9USA. And I have a lot more content coming for you ASAP, ASAP.